Greetings everyone. The, I'm continuing with the uh, tutorials regarding the time series analysis and uh, I was looking at some data sets from Google um, on Thanksgiving searches and I realized that it would be nice to have um, Thanksgiving as a backdrop to some time series um, analysis exercises using um, Google's data sets and um, some, some SPSS and R's uh, time series forecasting techniques. The outline for this presentation is as follows, um, starting with the definition of Thanksgiving. It's a very North American festival, a harvest festival, and um, even though it's a North American festival, it's predominantly celebrated in U.S. and Canada, but not on the same dates or same time. It's observed on fourth of uh, Thurs it's observed on fourth Thursday in November in the U.S. and the second Monday in October in Canada. So, um, theories because time Thanksgiving is something that happens only in October in Canada and November in in in, in the U.S. and you don't observe it uh, much. Um, so what I have to do is I have to find data on Thanksgiving and one of the things that I've been working with these days is the Google's uh, data sets. Google has released a lot of data and information on how people are using Google to search information, and um, so it's called Google Trends and Trends.Google.com. And um, I've used that data, and I'm um, going to first describe the data set and uh, how you can learn from basically time series data. And also, Google allows you to map things up, and then I'll show you some maps as well. Uh, how do you analyze seasonal time series um, using um, the data from Google? Well, um, the first would be an introduction to Google, but very quickly, two second introduction. Um, I'll show you how Google generates automatically um, graphs and maps which allow you to look at uh, some temporal trends and, and then um, we'll move from there. So let's start looking at Google first. Here, I, what I've used is I'm looking at uh, two locations, United States and Canada, and all the regions in there. I'm use, looking at the web searches there and I'm looking for searches conducted by people using the word Thanksgiving from the period 2004 to present uh, under all categories and I'll talk about all categories a little bit later and you could see that you know starting 2004 um, you can see the time series there are two interesting trends and I'll explain the trends in one second if I were to move the window to a little to the right here we go um, you will notice that um, the 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 x-axis is the uh, the time variable from 2004 to 2009 and the y-axis is in fact the um, a normalized scale from 0 to 100 so basically um, the Google um, database looks at the most um, high most search conducted in during the time period for that particular category and assigned it the value 100 and then everything else is normalized and scaled from there so you could see that you know United States being 10 times Canada's population the searches conducted in US are indexed at much higher than Canada for here for instance Canada is 2014 for for the United States here it's uh, 29 for Canada when it peaks and 100 for the US when it peaks for the US in November so um, the 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 height of the graph is actually a relative height of searches and um, so there's the the relative height is both for US and Canada as well as for the time period as well the the other interesting thing to note is that the the data are um, um, peaked much more pronounced for US than it is for Canada the peak is a little bit stretched for Canada as well again this is for all categories and then apart from the graphical output the data are also presented in in a map this is the map of US United States and you see for all categories in fact Utah has the highest concentration of Thanksgiving searches of all of the searches conducted so if you look at um, um, the display here you could see that um, f if Thanksgiving has a home in in the United States that certainly is Utah because um, this this state has the highest intensity of searches conducted for Thanksgiving in the United States here in the New, New York here somewhere um, uh, and Texas are, um, are much larger states so you could see that there's a special concentration and Thanksgiving is appears to be a much bigger uh, hit festival in the US um, in Utah than any other place 
having said that um, I when I look at shopping and then as a category and then then I see differences emerging and for shopping um, Utah no longer is a top state and in fact it's Michigan and New York and Kentucky that represents the highest search normalized search in, in engine uh, results compared to uh, all of the searches conducted and Utah drops to fourth um, in, in this category um, lastly I go to lifestyles um, just to see if, if, if how lifestyle websites were searched for the word Thanksgiving and I uh, said search and then again you see Utah is, is the top and followed by West Virginia and then Texas and North Dakota so again it's a lifestyle thing uh, uh, Thanksgiving is much more pronounced and much more celebrated and as far as lifestyle is concerned even when Utah is not the most populous state in the US so the w what I did from there onwards is I took the data and downloaded it from Google and um, then converted the data into SPSS format and I aggregated the weekly data into monthly data because certainly the data has a monthly time series rather than a weekly. I plotted the data set and looked, uh, studied the correlation structure and then estimated some models. So let's see what I did here. If you look at the data set, you see the U.S. is much more pronounced and Canada is much less. Very similar to uh, the graph that you saw earlier. And this is a plot of autocorrelation function and I'm not going to explain um, in detail apart from the fact that you could see that uh, at time series, time period 12, you could ha you have a more pronounced autocorrelation structure suggesting that it's a, um, um, th there is a strong autocorrelation at, the 12, at time period 12. When you compare this to Canada, um, the last one was uh, for the U.S., when you compare this to Canada, you will notice that the, um, the autocorrelation structure is much more um, spread. You have cor correlation, significant correlation at time period 1, at time period 12, but also at 10, and at time period uh, 10, 11, and 13, and then some negative correlations here. So, I'm not going to go into detail into how when one gets ACF autocorrelation function and what does it mean but just uh, to say that these numbers suggest that the autocorrelation structures are different for US and Canada and in SPSS I selected this option to run um, the the model and uh, and I was using SPSS 17 interestingly the it's it's a smart enough model to fit two different types of uh, models for USA and Canada looking at what uh, type of modeling technique suits uh, USA better than Canada and so on and so forth. So you could see that for USA we have a winter's uh, additive model and for Canada a simple seasonal smoothing model selected and um, and then the model fits are produced. Um, as part of the forecast I asked in SPSS to produce a 12-month forecast and here it is you could see that uh, the forecast is in blue, the observed data is in red, and it's all generated automatically. There's not much to be done other than knowing uh, uh, the ability to interpret. So once I did it in SPSS, I also did it in, in, in R, and here's the script in R, and um, it may appear a little complicated, but all you need to do is just specify the time series. So I say, here's my time series Canada dot can dot TS and I'm saying um, this is a time series starting in 2004 and it has a frequency of 12 and um, I just say that uh, hold winters run a hold winters model for Canada I ran run it I plot it and I predict 18 month uh, predictions here and then um, plot the observed and the predicted and I do the same for for US. It may look a little complicated but it's much faster to do in in R than it is in SPSS. The results are here. Here's the output of the model um, and you could see almost similar uh, forecasting. What R does is it actually um, when it, it um, uh, produces the forecast so the red is the forecast but you see in blue the confidence interval around the forecast. So you could see again a peaking in November 2010 um, and then uh, the, the confidence to interval around it and this is the model for Canada uh, again you could see the observed data in black the forecasted data in red and then 
this is the in sample forecast right to the left of it and it's out of sample forecast to the right of it and if you look at how closely these two run it appears to be a decent model and 